people, 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 people. Ke pa sa sa pa se what they do. Now people will say that the Chinese are back at it once again, one more again with all the fugazi, all of the fake, all of the bootleg, all of the ends. We are speaking about clothes, we are speaking about shoes, we are speaking about rete, lele, blue, blah, bling. Now people, based on information, it is said at the center, we are speaking about the counter-terrorism and organized crime investigative branch. We are speaking about CTAC. They have set up an investigation and basically B-U-S-T-E-D, an establishment we are speaking about on East Queen Street. And um, people, when we talk about the location, 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 location is everything. Now it shows just how brazen and barefaced these teeth are because them set up shop right across the street from the CTAC building. And when I talk about CTAC, I am speaking about the branch of the government or the branch of the Popo that is supposed to be investigating bootleg. We are speaking about counter-terrorism. We are speaking about fake and knockoff goods. And also, they were just across the street from the Kingston Central Popo station. So people, even though they realize when them set up shop that there was a CTAC building or CTAC office and also Kingston Central Police Station, it did not faze them one bit. So anyways, this establishment was raided by CTAC yesterday and people, when they went over there, they found knockoff of everything. We are talking about bootleg clothes, we are talking about shoes, we are talking about Nike, we are talking about Adidas, we are talking about Versace, we are talking about Louis Vuitton, we are talking about Michael Kors, we are talking about Supreme. And people, when you talk about those brands, we are speaking about some brands from Italy, we are speaking about some very expensive clothing. However, everybody in Jamaica seems to be wearing all of these knockoff because people if you go to any of these dancehall events you would think that you're in some high fashion event because everybody is lacing all sort of thing you don't think say paris or milan you're there because everybody have on with such a gucci this gucci that rete lele blue blah bling However, the truth and the fact is that most of the time when you go to these dance hall events and you see purses laced from head to foot, we are talking about in a Versace and all sort of name brand. Most of the time it is a knockoff, but people like them say, fake it till you make it. So people, take a listen to what the head of CTAC has to say about this trend in Jamaica. We are speaking about all these bootleg establishments that are set up in Jamaica. Take a listen, take a look, and then I'll give my piece. Unique because it is across from two police establishments. You have the Kingston Central and the CTAC headquarters. And the CTAC headquarters is where my office is, the, the counterfeit department, the, the, the trafficking. You understand, you understand me? So it, it is right, right in our face. Yesterday they open early, today they open late. Tomorrow they might open late. So they stagger their open hours. And um, I. Yes, and also based on their business model, um, where they use their phones. So it, it, they, they don't, in my view, they don't rely on heavily on the walking traffic. They use the phone to conduct the business. The, 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 the dollar value is not what is important to us. It's, it's the fact that we value our citizens and we have a job to do and we are enforcing the law. And as I always said, that we don't know, you know, what they use to make these shoes, right? Um, the, the issue of, I mean, the coronavirus now, it is a cause of concern, so we all have to open our eyes and be sure that you buy the branded product. It is telling us that these individuals, they, have, they don't care, for one, and two, they probably have no respect for the law. You know, and they feel as if they can just sell their wares just about anywhere and get away with it. But I can tell you, even if it is one pair of shoe, once you use that trademark, without the authorization of the brand owner, it becomes a breach. And with our law, right, it is still, it is still a crime. So people, you hear what the man is saying. He is saying that they think that it is a game. It is almost like a cat and mouse game. And people, it seems like the thief them. It seems like the person that are doing a knockoff. It seems as if they are winning because they are making boku cash. And they are finding all sorts of cunning way to basically go around the poor poor. So people, we are talking about some beer fierce. We are talking about some brazen set of thief. Point blank and period. Now people, when we think about the fact that we are just in February of 2020 and based on the information from the CTAC head, he is saying that 
in this year alone we are talking about in less than two months there were in excess of 200 million dollars of counterfeit goods that were busted in a jamaica and people in this establishment we are speaking about in excess of five million dollars so we are talking about over 200 million dollars in a less than two months and we saw that in this latest BUSD, there were three persons that was A-R-R-E-S-T-E-D. And most of them look like Jamaican based on the fact that they are tattooed up. And based on what we know about these Chinese, they are not usually tattooed up. Most of the times we are speaking about the ones that are in Jamaica. So people, we are speaking about a brazen daylighting. We are talking about some people that don't give a damn about anything. We are speaking about rules, laws and regulation. So the head of CTAC is making it abundantly clear that it seems like these persons that are running this establishment, they have no respect for the law. Now people, this only shows the sellout mentality of Jamaica and it seems like these foreign nationals and specifically these Chinese in this case, they feel like they can come to Jamaica and do just about anything that they choose to do because it seems like they have a green light. It seems as if they have immunity to do any sort of thing in a Jamaica and people, when you compare china to jamaica i don't think that any jamaican no time no place nowhere never in the history of china could have go to china and do what the chinese are doing in jamaica so people it seems like persons feel like they can come to jamaica and violate the rules and laws and regulation and it seems as if there is no sort of penalty because it's short and the fact that we don't see any chinese getting deported never ever we always hear about cases of bootleg and we see them get arrested rete lele blue blah bling however we never hear that they get convicted or deported back to china because people at the end of the day money is always the motive and it seems as if once you can pay your way out of any C R I M E, once you are rich it is almost like you have immunity in a jamaica point blank and period so anyways people that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that and like me say it is just my views and opinion it is not the gospel your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine but let me know what you think in the comment section bless up now before I move to the next part of my video, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. One word, don't put no space between the words. Jamaica Dancehall Source. Now the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that the St. James Popo has launched a manhunt for an escape slap away person. We are speaking about a person whose name is Leroy Vaz and he is said to be from Wells Lane. We are speaking about Sandy Bay. We are speaking about Hanover. Now, based on the information, it is said that this person forced open a section of his cell and basically made his escape. We are speaking about from the Barnet Street Popo station. We are talking about Friday morning. We are talking about cracking of the morning. We are talking about cracker dawning. People, let me ask you a question. After all the time that we see that these persons are escaping from this Popo station, you would have thought that these people would have learned their lesson me talk about the poor poor so people is this a case where somebody gets some sort of money or is it negligence against once more as it pertains to the poor poor now people when you think about the fact that we are living in modern times and this is 2020 and based upon the information that they are housing some very serious c-r-i-m-i-n-a-l-s we would have thought that they would have implemented some safety measures to make sure that some serious person don't basically take for themselves out of these places and people based on the fact that this man is wanted for a slap away based on the fact that this man is a serious man and a menace to society how could they make this mistake especially when we see that every year we hear the same thing happening in jamaica once again one more again so people it seems as if it is a revolving door and we have to ask the question are they keeping these persons in a some chicken cub or some fowl cub because people that is the only way that persons are escaping on a daily or weekly or yearly basis in a jamaica so people it seems as if they don't learn from their mistake and it seems as if they always do the same thing over and over and people it is to the detriment of the persons in a society we are talking about the citizens we are speaking about the residents so people, the question that I have to ask is that if the people who are in charge to make sure that the citizens are safe, if they are incompetent and negligent, who is going to protect the persons in a Jamaica? People, it is a simple question. Let me know in the comment section. 
Now, whenever we see any sort of incident like these occur in Jamaica, we have to ask the question, is anybody going to be held accountable? Who is taking a bribe? Who is getting paid? Who is getting money under the table for basically letting out these people upon a regular basis? People, that is a question that we have to ask, point blank and period. So anyways, people, that is my views on the whole thing as it pertains to that. And like me say, it is just my views and opinion. It is not the gospel. Your views and opinion can be respectfully different from mine. But let me know what you think in the comments section. Bless up.